We made this movie for you guys. That's why we made the movie, because we share a passion about this character. Uh, as, we can, as we all know, he's a much darker character, and I think that's what distinguishes this movie. Unlike other Marvel films, this is a much grittier, grounded, um, complicated character. There's no one more perfect to play Eddie Brock in Venom. Um, but for me, as a huge fan of Tom, uh, I, I love pretty much everything. No, I can say officially everything he's been in. Um, so when I heard he was excited about playing uh, Eddie Brock in Venom, it was like a dream come true. There's just, uh, for me, no one more exciting to watch on screen. He just brings so much complexity and depth to every character he inhabits. There's a danger and a uh, complexity and with uh, what's unique to this character is just that duality between Eddie and Venom and you know watching what he does with everything he everything he inhabits he just elevates it to the next level so it was a dream come true to find out that he was interested and it's been an absolute pleasure working together on this film. Venom is by far like for me the um, like I'm, I don't want to like upset anyone but I think he's the coolest Marvel uh, superhero that there is. Um, and uh, I just like the way he looks, first and foremost. <clears throat> then also there's my son, and uh, he's a massive Venom fan. And, uh, and, and he, was, uh, he, he was a very strong influence on me uh, as to why I ought to play mm -hmm. uh, Venom specifically. I read the script, I fell in love with the character, and, um, and it's a double act, so there were two, two characters that I'm playing. Um, and I'm, I'm a bit of a geek about acting, so I wanted to play, uh, I did a film called Legend, where I played two brothers. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Uh, and I thought I could do a similar um, technique, but this time I get to play with a huge like, visual effects monster. I, I gotta give a, um, a lot of uh, props to the sound boys, Coffee and Patrick, who, who actually, I would record Venom uh, up first before I did a scene with Venom or other actors who had to, to work in the scene with Eddie Brock and Venom together, but they couldn't hear necessarily Venom, but I could. And uh, the sound boys would listen to my cues or the other actors' cues and have to play or interrupt other actors with the right lines at the right time. As a director, it was just so exhilarating to watch him have these conversations with himself all at once. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, seriously, like, because he is uh, two different you know, beings are occupying him, living in his head as simultaneously, and the way he's able to be interacting with Riz in a scene, but also reacting to Venom, who's talking to him in his head, uh, at the same time just watching at the monitor, it was just, you know, so fun to see the way he was able to create this world. He's an anti-hero, so he has, he'll figure on a goal, and he'll do whatever he has to do to get that, to that goal, even if that means going around the outside and doing some naughty or bad things to get there. He kind of finds his perfect opposite partner in mm -hmm. a, in a, you know, this huge, great alien beast that arrives and lives rent-free in his body. <laughs> yeah. and, and no one will believe him that it's there. Carlton Drake is a genius, a billionaire, uh, an inventor, and he's made a lot of scientific breakthroughs in his time. And at this point, the Life Foundation, which is the, the organization that he founded, um, is trying to answer the question of what does the future for humanity look like? Mm -hmm. Because planet Earth is almost done. As you saw in the footage, it's like we're on the brink of ecological and environmental collapse. So he thinks probably we've got a future in outer space. So it's in exploring that that he comes across the symbiotes. From Carlton Drake's point of view, he's really trying to do right by humanity, trying to ensure we've got a future. It's just that old saying, sometimes to make an omelette, you've got to break some eggs. Michelle is awesome. It's, I wish she was here now, actually. She would love this. Um, she's a brilliant actress, and, and, and it, like, through and through. Like, uh, there, there's nothing that that, that, that actor can, that cannot do. She's brilliant. And um, working with her, she's a consummate pro. She's super, super patient with me talking to myself all the time, <laughs> uh, trying to figure things out. She's a problem solver, and she, I mean, she's awesome. She's an awesome actress, so uh, working with her is a delight. She just brings such a warmth and humanity to the character, um, but she's really strong. I mean, that's the, as people remember from the comics, Anne Wang is a really strong character, and uh, I think Michelle did her uh, justice as far as just being, um, you know, 
a worthy adversary to Eddie Brock. If, uh, if Riot's an adversary to Venom, we can say that uh, Anne is a worthy adversary to Eddie. Jenny Slate, uh, who I'm a massive fan of, a massive fan of her as a performer and a comedian, she, um, she plays the lead scientist at the Life Foundation. So um, it was interesting because, I mean, I think people, she's going to be a real discovery for a lot of people in terms of the kind of role she plays here. She brings a lot of soul and, and warmth and humanity to this, to this character, to this scientist. But in between takes, she just had us in stitches. She's so funny. She's just, I mean, I just really want us to be able to leak the footage of behind the scenes of what she was doing between takes. I think we can all agree it would be pretty amazing to see Spider-Man and Venom face off in a film. Um, <laughs> and I know I can speak for myself when I say that I'd be really excited to go see that film. So I have to think that the studio is thinking the same way and that at some point down the road, they're going to run across each other's paths. Tom Holland recently said that out of all the characters in the Marvel's universe, the one that he would most like to face off with is Venom. So, how do you feel about that? Who, me? You ready, you, you ready to go face to face? What, what, toe to toe with Tom Holland? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a go, yeah, you know. <laughs> well, you, you gotta have a go, ain't ya? <laughs> Yeah, no, he's an awesome actor, and I'd love to, I'd love to work with him, and I love Spider-Man, so... But, you know, you, you, who knows? Big round of applause for our panelists. Thank you, everybody, from Thank Venom. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. you Thank much. you to all our panelists. Thank you guys for joining us here. Have a wonderful rest of your Comic-Con. I'm really excited to see how people react to what we've done. I'm going to show some footage. It seems like Venom is the fan favorite here right now. It's the buzz I keep hearing. You know, one of our producers just walked into the convention center with a Venom t-shirt and people started mobbing him, asking him what he knows. So uh, I'm quietly confident, but also really, you know, anxious to see how it's received. I think people are already loving the fact that it feels different to your average superhero movie because this is a character who's normally an anti-hero. And now he's leading a story, so you know it's going to be a little bit of a twist. It's going to be maybe a bit darker. I think it walks a really interesting line between horror and comedy. Um, I think it's quite uncompromising. It's quite badass. You know, Venom is Venom is really like a body possession movie. You know what I mean? It's a story. It's like an alien that takes over someone's body against their will. That's crazy stuff. It's almost like a werewolf movie or something in that sense. You know, so um, I think it has that energy. It's an honor, really, to be a part of that team. I love Zombieland, I love Ruben as a guy. Jenny Slate, amazing comic talent. Michelle Williams, what a phenomenal actress. Um, and Tom Hardy, an old pal of mine, and so pleased for the success that he has created for himself through sheer dedication, force of will, and talent, you know, and to be able to reconnect with him and, and to make this film with him actually just felt really nice felt really good. I feel lucky to be here. I just think people um, should expect the unexpected and um, get ready. It couldn't be more excited. I mean, this is really a dream come true. Like to bring a real life comic book movie to the most uh, adoring fans of comic books like this is what we made it for. We made it for the, everyone who's here. It couldn't be more excited. I just have so much nostalgia for this place because we came here first with Zombieland in 2009. It was my first exposure to Comic-Con and the reception that we had for that film just made me fall in love with it. But what it is is a chance for people who are really passionate about uh, whether it be comic books, uh, TV shows, movies, anything that they, they share love for, they can come be here with people that are like them and celebrate the things that they're excited about. So as somebody who makes something that people like, or hopefully that they like, you know, to get to share that with people is so exciting. We're about to go into Hall H, and so it's really exciting just for me because what I feel like what we brought 
there's something distinctive within the comic book genre. Like I feel like Venom and the movie that we've made are a little different tonally than the rest of the comic book universe. And so to get to make something a little grittier, darker, more violent, more badass, and to share that with fans of the comics who will appreciate it, like it's a dream come true. When I uh, first got involved with the project, the dream person to play Eddie Brock was Tom Hardy. So get to be at Comic-Con with Tom Hardy and present the material that we couldn't be more excited about uh, to fans who came here to see what we have. It, it's going to be so fun tonight. Just uh, and What's really exciting is that Tom's never been in Hall H, so to get to feel that energy. I mean, you felt it in Brazil, and we felt it remotely, but to be sitting there in the room with so many people and to share that passion, it, I can't wait. Hey, Vale here. I hope you liked that Marvel video. Okay, keeping with the Marvel theme, so you all would know that Jon Favreau got the gig that kick-started the Marvel Cinematic Universe by directing the first Iron Man. But Marvel were initially after some other big filmmakers to direct the film. Among the names on their hit list were Quentin Tarantino, there goes your 12A rating, um, Nick Cassavetes and Joss Whedon. Joss eventually stuck around and landed the Avengers Assemble gig when Favreau turned it down. Yes. What's your favorite Marvel movie? Let me know in the comments below. To watch more cool videos like this, the moment they are online, click on the subscribe button now and don't forget to also click on the notification bell as well. See you next time.